Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Laura of Laura Plans It, and today I am unboxing and sharing with you the 2021 Moxie Life Weekly and Goal Setting Planner. All right guys, there is so much to share that's new with Moxie Life this year. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. The Moxie Life Planner is the planner that I use for all of my task management and to-do lists for the year. I originally started out last year with the Moxie Life Planner as a behavioral and goal setting planner for my son who struggles with ADHD and an extremely high intelligence level. So we call him twice exceptional and he sure is. But as his therapy has changed and as social distancing has really put a damper on our lives, his recording style needed to change as well. And so because of that, I kind of inherited the Moxie Life Horizontal for myself. And now I'm kind of using it the way that works best for me. There's plenty of Plan With Me videos here on my channel as well. But today I get to share with you the 2021 Moxie Life. And I will be comparing it slightly to some of the 2020 pages, just making sure that I'm not sharing anything private again about my son's care. So there won't be any goal setting pages from the 2020 planner shared, but lots of fun things in here. So let's go ahead, let's open this up and I will share with you everything that's inside. All right, as I'm opening this up, I'll share a couple little details with you about the Moxie Life Planner. The Moxie Life is a wire O bound planner, so you'll see that here in just a minute. Also, hey, let's just take a look at this beautiful, beautiful box this year. Those dreams look good on you. They sure do, Moxie Life. <gasps> Guys, I'm so excited for this. Like, I I was nerding out so bad when the box arrived. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen how much I've been nerding out. You're gonna see a little sneak peek right on the top right here. So I'm gonna just tuck that off to the side and take out the actual planner. The planner itself is, uh, I believe retails at $68. And I think that, that is an exceptionally, like amazingly good price for loads of reasons. Um, before I continue on that, there is beautiful packaging. I get to give this to my kids now. So for those of you who saw my Instagram post of my kids just like immediately gravitating towards this packaging, they can have the filling and they can have, they can't have the box. I wanna see if I can reverse this box, kind of like we do with the Erin Condren seasonal boxes. I'm gonna test that out in a little bit. And if you follow me on Instagram, I will share over there if that works. But I just think this is beautiful. So this is the shipping box that it came in. As I was saying, the $68 price point I think is fantastic. And I'll tell you why. This is a goal setting planner and a weekly planner in one. So it's twice as much as you would get with a normal standard weekly planner or with a goal setting planner. So you're getting double in one planner and that is, that's fantastic. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, I do still use my power sheets, however, I put a lot of the power sheet stuff in the weekly part of this planner. I track it a little bit more detailed in here and then I transfer it and transcribe it out to uh, my power sheet sending list. So I use them together. So the Moxie Life Planner itself comes in this beautiful sturdy, sturdy box. It's got this really fine pinstripe on it and then you open it up and this is my 2021 cover. I love this. Like I love this so much. It's a it's a kind of a royalish blue. It's this. Here's a little card insert that comes with it. It's this color blue right here. And it's striped over a very pale, pale gray. I would, it's almost white, it's very pale gray. My lights in here with my new lighting setup are so bright, it is a little hard for me to tell because I've got bright lights in my face right now. But I love the neutral cover here. I love the way it looks, the way that it, it's just very slim lined and it coordinates with all the pages on the inside, which is gorgeous. The Moxie Life, as I mentioned before, is the wire O binding. I believe this is a seven by nine. It's a seven by nine planner. So the same standard size that you would see in like the Erin Condren Hourly. So here is my Erin Condren Hourly planner. As you can see, it's the same size as that. And then again, same size as the 2020 Moxie Life planner. Same, same coil, same binding. As you can see, it's all the same width and everything from last year's as well. Now, as you can see from this, and I'll compare it, I have an 18 month Erin Condren where I, I removed the last six months of weekly spreads, but I left the monthly and the tabs in there. So just to kind of give you an idea, and you can watch my video on that from back in May, but this is the size difference in the Moxie Life, um, I have horizontal, this is the horizontal, Moxie Life horizontal versus the Erin Condren hourly. You can see there's a pretty decent size difference here. The Moxie Life measures approximately 
just under an inch and a half wide, whereas my Erin Condren, and I've been using this since July, so there's some stickers and things in here. The Erin Condren is just at an inch when I kind of pinch it together a little bit there. So, I mean, this is a half an inch thicker than the Erin Condren planner, but guys, that is, don't forget, you are getting so much in between the weeks that, it, I mean, to me, that is, that it's, I can't believe they were able to keep it that thin and have such a gorgeous paper nonetheless. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this right up. We've got this hardcover textured binding here. This cover is like, this is a durable cover. As you saw, I mean, this was my, this is my, I'm team yellow for 2020. I'm my horizontal. You can see this is, a, this is the same hardness cover. I use this planner. I mean, I took it everywhere, especially for the first few months while it was my son's behavioral journal. And it is, near pristine condition. And so these covers are phenomenally durable. 2021, here we are, we're right into it. We open it up and we've got our welcome from Sierra Friend, who is the uh, founder of Moxie Life, who, whose story just every time I hear it, I get all teared up and she's just the nicest person. If you haven't gone and read about Sierra, learned about her and learned about Moxie Life, go do that, like right now. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. It's such a beautiful story. So we get right into the goal setting pages here. We're gonna talk, it goes over how the goal setting is set up. These pages are nice and small. There's not a whole lot going on, but it is very, for as concise as it is, it's very on point. The life compass, it, the compass assessment is the big kind of goal setting portion of the Moxie Life. And this compass, you have reassessments every three months to kind of make sure that you've got balance in your life. And for me, balance is really important. So there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections. Personal, fun and recreation, work and learning, family and relationships, health and wellness, spiritual and personal growth, financial and physical environment, which I love how these are broken down. This is not necessarily a self-assessment right off the bat. When you first get into this, you're gonna go ahead and take the actual assessment. So you give yourself a score. It walks you right through how to do that here. You're gonna give yourself a score for each one of these categories, tally it up, and that is going to be your score for your compass, and you're gonna go ahead and fill it in. And you can see down here the final step. Here's an example of what a filled in compass looks like. So when you go ahead and fill it in, it'll show you just how balanced you feel your life is based on the assessment questions. Once you fill that in, I personally come back, now that I've used this a little bit, I will come back every three months and reassess the questions and see if my answers change. And that's how I fill in my compass. Some people I think just go through and kind of self-assess and guess their numbers and that's okay too. There's intentions for 2021 plus your word of the year, which I, I have always said the word of the year is really powerful. I like to put mine up where I can see it throughout my house. Then we get into the setting goals portion of the, the goal setting tab. So it's gonna break down how to set up your goals, how to write your goals. So for example, clean my garage this weekend versus get rid of clutter. These are very smart, attainable, and measurable goals. So that's very important. So this walks you through that. It walks you through the different types of goals. And then we get into annual goals, monthly goals, and weekly actions. So how to break down your goals to make them work for you. We have things to consider in each area of life when writing goals. Now this, I'm really curious about this because I believe this was a printable that was on the Moxie Life either Facebook page or website last year um, for 2020. You know, I think she put it up last in 2019, so last fall. And I don't recall it being in the 2020 planner. Like I said, this the goal setting section is very private because it's my son's goals and he is nine, so that will not be shared today. But I do believe that this is actually something that was not included last year. So I do love that that's here now. Here is a basically a vision board. So create a list or mind map of ideas, dreams, and goals for the coming years. So whatever it is that makes this page work for you, it's actually dot grid. It's really hard to see that. I don't know if you can see this in the light that I've got going on in here to make sure you guys can see everything else. But there is a very faint dot grid in there. And then we have annual goals. So these are your 2021 goals. They are broken into four pages, one, two, three, four. 
and each page has two goals on it. So write your focus and then write down the goals for 2021 right in here. And then at the end of each goal, it asks, how will my life improve by reaching these financial goals or physical environment goals, spiritual and personal growth goals? And there's two lines, like a line and a half to kind of write a sentence like my life will improve by this. And I think those statements are really important too. I think by writing it down and writing down how your life is gonna get better, you're more likely to do the things that will make your life better. Here's the actual vision board and it's two page spread, which I think is great. So you can put in anything that, that helps you visualize your goals. Um, as I mentioned in my power sheets video, I am terrible with vision boards. I'm sorry, it's just not something I've really ever been great at. I'm working at them this year, so I'm hoping that I will be able to share something more meaningful about them later in the year. Uh, if I do have any more information on that, you can find it on my Instagram at Laura Plans It, but unfortunately right now, vision boards are very new to me. So I'm hoping that I can find something great for that. Here are some goal setting quick tips, and then we get right into January. So this is where I use the planner the most. I do go through the goal setting process, but again, as I mentioned before, I use my power sheets as well for that. So I kind of do this as my confirmation that I'm doing what I want to do for my goals. When it comes to the monthly and weekly spreads though, this is, this is where I personally thrive. So here is January, 2021. You can see that there are definitely some changes in the monthly layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my 2020 planner. I will be showing you guys the month of November in my planner, but you'll see in a minute why that really doesn't matter. All right, so here is November of 2020. I'm just gonna tuck this under here for just a smidge so you can see comparison to comparison. We've got some pretty standard things first off the bat. First, it is actually more colorful. You can see that January in big bold letters is now the same color as the numbers here and that will continue on throughout the book. We've got, instead of the numbers being centered in the monthly box, they are now off to the top right corner, which I very much prefer that. It gives me more room to write what's going on on that day. Holidays are still included in the planner. So we've got New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Inauguration Day. This design here with the, I guess what are we calling it? The diagonal lines, I know the words, the diagonal lines here, I feel it seems to be a little bit darker on the bottom here, but it, the fade seems to be a little bit further down. Let's see if we can put that right next to another. Yeah, it looks like it fades just slightly down Actually, maybe it's a little bit bold, more bold on this page here. And it is a darker color and it is that, that blue color. And I do believe it'll stay that. So this page is lighter and it fades further down. Okay, so as you can see, whoops, let's flip that over. The mini calendar is still here. Our notes section is still here. And there's still a nice big quote at the top of the monthly spread. So you still have that in here as well. When we get into the next page, you'll see we have our monthly goals for January. So here's what 2020 spread looked like. The differences here are very subtle. So I'll just kind of point them out really fast. For January, we actually have the month of January written here in monthly goals. And for each goal that we have written down here, there's also a line that says focus. So that was not part of 20, uh, 2020's planner. The 2021 planner does have the month written down and a focus for your goals. But otherwise, the layout is the same. And I really like the monthly goals section because it does kind of let you look at each category. For me, I don't work on all my categories every month, but I try to at least make sure that there's something going on that I pay attention to each month. So, you know, my spiritual and personal growth might not be a really big focus for me in September because that's when we start homeschool. So I really put myself on the back burner so that I can focus on my family. And I usually put that in the work and learning category, but that doesn't mean I don't need a little bit of, of relaxing time for myself. So I might write in here, you know, don't forget to, you know, watch a YouTube video to teach you something new. Even if it's like five minutes for the whole month, I might put something like that in here. So, so I do like having that and I like it all being, Nice big two page spread because it gives you a really good overview of what's going on. All right, weekly actions. Now this says week 53. That is because this is the last, this is for the last week of Dece uh, December and the first week of January. So I'm gonna kind of flip ahead to week one. We've got this page here, which is blank. And well, it's got a dot grid on it. I shouldn't say blank. 
It used to be notes and reflections. Now we're into a dot grid spread here. I honestly would have preferred to keep the notes and reflections. I used the line page more than any of the other things in here. I really did love having that notes and reflections page, especially when I was using this for a therapy journal. However, it is a dot grid, so it's not like I couldn't draw the lines in myself very easily. But like I said, I, I, do, I don't mind this. I did use this page probably more than any other page, but again, it will be just fine. Then we get to the weekly actions. I love that it tells you what week of the year you're in. I just think that's a, a nice tiny little detail. It's nothing, it, it's really the only major change other than the, the way that the font is stylized up here is that they added the week. We've got weekly goal boxes and this is just half a page instead of the full two page spread like you get with a monthly one. And then we're gonna go into the actual weekly spread. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna flip into the 2021 so you can see the differences here. Right off the bat, I'm thrilled to tell you that these diagonal lines are no longer in the back of the, um, of the weekly boxes. Now I have a horizontal, as you can see, there are vertical planners as well. I think you guys should join me here on Team Horizontal because I find that that's the best team. So <laughs> I'm gonna continue on now. I've made my piece with that. Every day is written out nice and clearly, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 4th, 5th, 6th of January. I don't necessarily think that January has to be written on each day. I think that writing Monday the 4th, Tuesday the 5th would have been fine because, well, there isn't a mini calendar in here, but I, I, I think it looks fine. I think it's a little bit nicer than the full month written out. And I think because it's just three letters, it'll balance really nicely as we get further into the book with different months of the year and so on. So if you've got a sticker that you're gonna wanna cover it, it'll be about the same size every, every day. Uh, the lines are all the same. The heart for your gratitude is on the right side of the line instead of the left side, which again, I prefer. I draw a line down the middle here and make this my appointments category. And then I do this as my to-do box. So having the hearts over here for me is a little bit easier to work around, especially when I'm writing things like um, appointments in. I try to write them towards the bottom here. So if I have to add anything in later, I can. The notes and habits are the same. The empty boxes on these sides, these full box spaces here on the side are the same. And, and, and then that's pretty much it. I think this is a little bit more colorful because there isn't that grayed out lines. You can clearly see the bright blues here. And, and, and really, honestly, that's about it. I think it, this does take up a little bit more space than this, but there you have it. So that's kind of the differences between the weekly spreads so far. So we're gonna keep flipping through here just a little bit. You can see the weekly actions, the note, the dot grid page now, and the horizontal spread, still the same as we get through. When we get to the end of every month, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> when we get to the end of every month, you're gonna see your monthly reflections, biggest wins, what's working in your life, what's not working, what did you learn this month, what improvements or adjustments do I need to make going into the next month? What are you most grateful for right now? And what habits do you wanna nurture in the following month? And then you can rate your overall satisfaction. So if you had a really good month, you're gonna rate it a 10. If it's not so great, maybe two or a three. So this is at the end of every month. We get into February. This is really pretty. I love that. And I know there's one, there's a little quote at the beginning of every month. Well, not April. I'll explain why in a second. But I love how that quote looks. We get into February, which is a beautiful teal color. And you can see that when we get to the weekly spreads, that teal is now continuing on. Again, lots of holidays written in here as well. So we've got, I mean, they're all filled in here very nicely. Super Bowl Sunday's even in here. My son thought that was fantastic. Um, he's not a huge football fan, but he loved that that was in here. So again, we've got the bright teal for February. I'm gonna flip over to March, which is a nice bright green color. I like that for March, you know, St. Patrick's Day. We're Irish, so I'm, I'm into that. Again, that, color's, color, uh, uh, that color comes through for the rest of the week and throughout the month. Now, when we get to April, we have our quarterly compass. This is your first full reassessment of how things are going. So you, could, you write in your current total, your previous total, you can use the chart and the assessment at the beginning of the book if you want. If you think that you can kind of go through and self-assess, that's, that, I mean, that's perfectly fine. So overall, my scores increased, decreased, stayed the same. What actions contributed most to these results? 
three words to describe how I generally felt over the last 90 days. I think that's really, I think that's a really good reflective way to kind of figure out how you are succeeding in your goals. And then where's my biggest opportunity for growth and what area will be my main focus over the next 90 days? That is how I operate. I look to see what's gonna be my next focus over the next month, two months, three months, and, and not necessarily I'm gonna focus on all these areas little bits. I like to kind of work on one particular area, build a nice habit, build some new growth in that area, and try to keep that status quo as I work on another area the following month or two. So April has that instead of a quote on the front. And then we get into the monthly spreads. Now April is the same color as the actual Moxie Life Planner. Someday, Sierra will show me how much she loves me and she'll make a neutral color planner where they're all just this color and I'll be a happy, happy lady. Cause I don't like bright colorful things. I really don't, not in my planners. And I know that's kind of, it's such a minor detail because the Moxie Life is not a bright and colorful planner. I know that, but still. I love neutral planners, and you all know that. So this continues on throughout the rest of the book. And again, these beautiful quotes in the beginning of the months that do not have the assessments. And then every three months, you get a quarterly compass to go over what's going on and to make sure that you're kind of following along with the plan that you've set out at the beginning of the year. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna flip through all the way to December. Good things are coming. We get into December and again, we'll flip through. We get to the very end of the month, week 51 right here, week 52. There's our last week in the book, which goes through January 2nd of 2022, which I can't believe I'm even saying 2021, let alone 2022. And then we get to our monthly reflections our quarterly compass again. So at the end of the year, assess yourself again. This is this important. Now you might pick up a Moxie Life Planner for 2022 and not feel the need to do this because you'll be doing a compass at the beginning of that year. But if you wanna fill this out here anyways, I think this is a quick assessment and I think the ones at the beginning of the book are more of a an in-depth look at what's going on. We've got a little tab here for extras and that extras tab has our 2021 and 2022 mini calendar. Again, all in these bright colorful schemes that I believe coordinate with the month itself. And I just, I actually like the colorful here. I think that's really pretty. There's a little space at the bottom for important dates and then note pages, which I love that this planner has so many note pages. I mean, not only are you getting I mean, guys, look at this. You get your monthly spread, you get your monthly goals where you can write things down there. You've got this every week, you've got this blank dot grade page where you can write things down. And then you get in the back and there's just more note pages. And it's all just lined notes after lined notes after lined notes, which I think is really important. If you're carrying this around with you a whole bunch and you need to write notes down, um, which I have done, I have filled up a good chunk of the notes in the back of my 2020 Moxie Life Planner. It is so awesome to not have to carry a planner and a notebook. It just, it, it just is. So I love that that is a detail that's been added in here. This year we have a pocket in the back. Now, last year had a pocket. It wasn't as pretty as this one. Last year's pocket is just a plain kind of gray paper pocket, nothing fancy. I mean, it's nice, it's okay. I mean, it works, it's great. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it is a very nice pocket. This is a, a little bit more durable feeling to me. It's got that nice dare to dream, learn to grow, celebrate progress. And then we've got um, do it imperfectly, give yourself grace and trust the process. So nice little quotes and check boxes there. That pinstripe, diagonal pinstripe is here on the back as well. And there's a sticker sheet this year. And I, just, I was really excited about that. So there's a sticker sheet in the back of the book as well. And in case this pocket here isn't enough for you, there's a little bitty pocket over here as well in the back. Again, with that beautiful little pinstripe pattern that you can put on your planner. Now, the only thing I don't like about this is that it is wire O, which is always a little difficult for me to close, but with a planner that's this thick, guys, you, you can't do a coil. You have to do the wire O. So if that's kind of something that's concerning to you, don't be that worried about it. I really, honestly, it doesn't bother me. I've found that I am perfectly fine and I've adapted to it. Is it as, as smooth as a coil? No, but with all the stuff that comes in here, it kind of, to me, doesn't matter. Now, one new feature that I am so excited to share with you guys is that they have, the team at Moxie Life has come up with a way where you can actually change your covers. 
and I am going to do this for you. I am terrified, but I'm gonna try it. They have an instructional video on how, and I want you to click the link in my description and watch that video. If you do choose to buy the covers, I believe you do have to actually check a box that says you are doing that at your own risk. So risk, here I come. This is my second cover. Moxie Life has four designs this year. This is the one, honest to goodness, I love them all. I had a really, really, really hard time picking and I finally told uh, my, uh, Sierra that I said, please just pick for me. Like, these are the ones I like. This is kind of the order I like them in, but I don't know. And honestly, I'm really glad she sent me this one. I love it. I like this more. I really do, and I didn't think I would. This is a one of the designer covers. There are two designer covers this year. All right, so this is my second cover. This is a designer cover that comes from, I believe the designer is Toby Brown, T-H-O-B-I, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I am so sorry. Um, her Instagram is at callmethobs. I love her artwork, it's so beautiful. And when I saw that one of her covers was going to be released with the Moxie Life, I was very, very excited. The other collaborator for the designer is Jessie Park. And I actually have some of her washi tape from her collaboration with Simply Gilded. So I had a really hard time picking covers. Let me tell you, I just really did. But I love these ones, I'm really excited. So I am going to attempt to change the cover to show you what if it's difficult or not. I don't think it's gonna be terrible, but let's go ahead. I'm going to not fast forward through it, but I'm gonna play music for you as I do it because I can't talk and do at the same time very well. If you've watched any of my Planet of Me's, you probably know that already. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and when I am done, I will come back, I'll tell you everything I felt about the whole changing the cover process. Here it is all changed out, guys. I love the way this looks. This cover here to me is extremely neutral and my son who is nine loved it. He even said it looked like the Yankees pinstripe. So you got a guy who needs a planner who's into baseball. Um, so that was really easy. That was truly easy. If you look at the coil here, you can see it doesn't look any different than when I started. Everything looks perfectly normal here. The cover, oops, there we go, the band opens opens up just perfectly and it truly is really easy all i did was pull these down little by little i went all the way down the rows there and i turned it on its side when it was time to put the coil back in its place because i thought that was a little bit easier for me to do and i did go ahead and just slide them all a little bit back this is a wire o binding and because i've done so much in design and print i'm very familiar with how wire o binding works and so I actually even have a wire O binding machine in my home. I don't believe it is large enough to do this size capacity, but I actually bind a lot of things for my kids. I'm very familiar with it. These wires are super durable. So it was not difficult at all for me to pull them apart, but it was not difficult at all for me to put them back together. And now I have a brand new cover and I'm much happier with it, to be honest with you. I like the way it looks a little bit better. So. This is the Moxie Life Planner. I will show you the back really quickly. I do love that there's that little bit of detail with the foiling of the Moxie Life. And one thing to note is that you can see, oops, see now this is what I was talking about with the wire O is never really easy to, you gotta close it from the front to the back. There we go. I take this around everywhere and the foiling is still beautifully intact. Now the new Jessie Park cover, I believe has a foil 
design on it. So I would be pretty confident saying that I bet you it stays just fine. And for those of you that are horizontal team yellow with me, I have a feeling, and there's a really good chance I'm gonna try this soon, that I can undo this coil and take this cover off and put my yellow cover back on if I start to miss it next year, which definitely during the fall time, I feel like I'm really gonna miss this cover. So is it as easy to remove and put on as something like an Erin Condren cover? No, but I think that it's really durable. These covers are much more durable than the Erin Condren ones because they are so thick and I think it works just great. So this is the new 2020, 2021 Moxie Life Planner. Now, before I let you go, because we've got a lot that we've covered today, there's one more accessory I get to share with you today, and it is the Moxie Life Functional Sticker Book. So I'm gonna go ahead, open this up, and flip through it with you really quickly. For those of you who have watched my Power Sheets videos, you know that I use, there we go, I use the sticker book for color coordination on my goals. I will do the same throughout my Moxie Life Planner. So I wanna flip these through with you really quickly. First, we've got some circles. These, these are nice, tiny little circles. I'm gonna grab my tweezers so you can see the size here. Nice, teeny, tiny little circles right there. I absolutely love that. I use the circle stickers all the time for marking my goals so that when I see them in my goal setting planner, I know which goals I'm working towards and which ones are kind of more my focus that week or month versus uh, other goals. So there's a light version and a dark version of both of these colors. And it looks like these are hearts. So same thing, but hearts, light and dark version of both. These are nice and teeny tiny, I love that. These little hearts here, these are super cute. So there's the heart sticker and that is really small, but I love, love, love how small that is. And then again, light and dark of both of those. We've got some appointment style boxes here. Oh, these are little flags. There we go. So there's a flag sticker here for you. I hope that's getting in focus. It's hard to tell on my teeny tiny screen, but I hope that came in focus for you. There's larger, um, oh no, these are just more, these are like pointy flags. Instead of the ones that have little flag ends, these ones have more like an arrow style end there on them. Oops, I'm putting that one backwards. Okay. And same thing, but darker. We've got the same things, but with the um, that signature diagonal pinstripe. Now these are, these ones have, we've got some more of those pointy flagged ones, but we've also got these larger flags with the heart on them. And look how cute that is. You can actually see the outline of the sticker behind it in gray. But here is the, this one's a flag with a little heart on the bottom. And these are just like larger appointment stickers. More of those. These are teeny tiny flags. Oh, these are so adorable, guys. I could buy an entire thing of just these flags. Look at how teeny tiny that is. And that's so cute. I'll put that up next to my finger so you kind of have an idea of how small that is, but that is, that is so tiny. I love that. And there's light and dark of those. These ones are similar. They're a little bit longer flags, but still, oh, sorry. Still super teeny tiny. Love, love, love. I love the amount of functional stickers we're seeing here that are color coded and just cute for one. These stickers here are the, um, the goals. They coordinate with your goals. You can see that they've got the correct icons to match each one of the goals as well. And when you take them out of here, they are scalloped on the edge, just like you see in this picture, just quite a bit smaller than that. And that's it, that's the sticker book. So this is all functional stickers. I mean, all functional stickers. And guys, you know how much I love a functional sticker, particularly when it comes to my goal setting. So I'm really thrilled with that as well. So here is what I have for 2021 from Moxie Life. This sticker book is fantastic and it's gonna fit right in here. I can feel it in my bones. Look at that. So everywhere I go, I've got my new sticker book. I've got everything I need to go ahead and plan my goals and my to-dos in my week in my Moxie Life. I hope you guys really like this Moxie Life Planner. As you guys know who have been following for a while, I do use my Moxie Life every week, particularly for making sure I'm getting my tasks and to-dos done. And a majority of my goals revolve around those tasks and to-dos. This year I will be doing 
a lot more of the goal planning that's involved in here as well. Like I said, last year I used it for my son, so I really didn't get to do a lot for myself in that area of the planner, but I am really excited to check it out and to dive deeper into the Moxie Life way of goal setting and goal planning. So I hope you like this video. If you do, go ahead and hit that like button. If you'd like to see more on how I use my Moxie Life, both currently in 2020 and coming up in 2021, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you tap that bell, that turns on notifications so you're always alerted when a new video comes up. And as always, for behind the scenes, sneak peeks, and what I'm doing right now, head on over to my Instagram, at Laura Plans It. Thanks so much for watching.